someone I am lucky enough to count as a person I've been able to spend time with is a true insider in the fashion world. He is an icon. He is Kenneth Cole. Yeah. And what I love about Kenneth Cole, of course, he broke all the rules in the design world, but he also broke the rules about how we talk about mental health. And his latest collaboration really fits right into what I was talking about with Serena. Sometimes you don't feel okay. He has a genius collaboration that we're celebrating. And I'm gonna tell you right now, somebody in this audience will be walking away in different shoes than you came into the show with. That's all I'm gonna tell you. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Please welcome the legendary fashion icon, Kenneth Cole! Well, I thought about you this morning, because last night we had a quick conversation about mental health and children and you really wanting um, kids to have the opportunity to meditate and learn what that means to the body. And then I saw that Serena Williams quote where she said, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, no, to your point, nobody is okay every day except for Tamron Hall. <laughs> and I'm not, <laughs> listen, I wish, we, we talk all the time, I mean, I, I Every, I try to meditate, I do transcendental meditation, I pray, I try to find my center, but like everybody else, there's some days I don't want to get out of bed. And it doesn't feel like, you know, life is a joyous thing, but it is also hard. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's hard. I, I think we are all perpetually traumatized today, and mm. I, I think our algorithms ensure that. But we are fed stuff that makes us, puts us on edge, and we live on that edge. Yeah. And so well, we you just, posted we just... one in four of us will struggle with mental illness in our lives, whether it's a friend, a loved one, four of four of us will be affected. So that's everybody. It's everybody. That's everybody. Yeah, you're not getting out of this thing on, on, right. <laughs> on right. challenge, on faith. <laughs> right. So hopefully you develop the tools to, to deal with it, to process it, and to, and to support yourself as you go through the struggles and to support each other. And yeah. how do you show up? Um, and how do you show up for yourself? How do you show up for each other? And, and how do you look when you do? That's the other part. You weave a lot of this into your journey because it's, can you believe 40 years ago, this kid had the nerve to set up a pop-up shop before they were calling it pop-up shop. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let me just dissect this picture here. The, the, the appropriately unbuttoned shirt right, with the right, hair right, chest right, popping right. out. <laughs> There you are, ready to take on the world. Yeah, that's a younger, hairier version of myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And your dad, I mean, you come from this legacy. A lot, some folks don't know that your father was in the shoe world as well, started Candies, the brand, the iconic Candies brand. So it's kind of in your blood, but it was up to you to take it to the next step. Yeah, it's just to kind of find my path. And, yeah. and, and I, we, we, Candies is something we did together. That was kind of my first venture. Um, into life below the ankles. <laughs> I like that life below the ankles. And um, and I and it was a very defining product. Yeah. That and it was kind of this thing that people, uh, a shoe that people loved. But so then I took that to another place. And I and I I think that um, you know I've always thought throughout this journey how do I make what I do how do I connect with people in a meaningful way. Right. And it's not just what they put up but why and how does it make them feel and not what they stand in necessarily, but what they stand, what, what, what it helps stand them stand for. for. Right, because you were one of the first to, you know, use your billboard to take on conversations of HIV AIDS, homelessness. You used your brand as a way to advocate, not just to sell us a shoe or an item that we wear. So now taking me back to this mental health space, what made you, after all the success you've had in your life, say, wait a minute, let me stop, let me be present, and let me speak about where people are right now. We say on the show, let's talk about it. You wanted to talk about mental health and addressing it in a big way. Mental health is part of, it's so, it's so, it connects to everybody 
oddly, and I had no idea at the time, one in 200 people live with HIV today, and HIV was a real pandemic. And then we live with COVID, and COVID is even more pervasive, not as, not as lethal, but more infectious. And then we realized mental health yeah. affects everybody. Yeah. So, and, if it, and, and it's perpetuated by all these other things that are, we're living with every day. And, um, well, finance is stress. I mean, I am one of those people, I've been a journalist for 30 years. For the first time in my life, I actually said to my husband, I kind of don't want to watch the news. And I felt irresponsible because you need to know what's going on, whether it's small or big. But I, I get how we have the class of 2027 in the front row, which I don't even know how many years away that is. Um, <laughs> but I get why the social media becomes an escapism. Because here I am, a journalist, and I just said out loud, I cannot watch the news. Right. It's very hard. And a lot of it is because, you know, yeah. we are. It, we're overwhelmed with negative negativity in our lives, and yeah. and and the and the news feeds it, and algorithms yeah. feed it, and and so we need to find a, a place where to go within ourselves and yeah. where we can feel good about ourselves. I know, and that's why you founded your nonprofit, your mental health nonprofit, because you want to give people. We met. You were helping some guys at a barber shop. There was a great uh, team at a barber shop. We talked with. They were in the chair, men. Whereas women usually, you know, we talk at the beauty salon, tell all our business and talk to each other, but really supporting men in the barber seat, supporting other men, that it's okay not to be okay as a man and that the right. barbershop is a safe space to do that. Yeah, so how do you connect with people? Where do you connect with yeah. people? We're actually starting an initiative, which we're gonna announce with, with New York's mayor next week, um, where it's called Wellness at Work, where yeah. you can, where we talk to people in the workplace, because then you can connect, you can change culture. Yeah, you, you can change, change culture. You can connect with millions of people overnight. We're gonna, we're gonna es establish a, a, a best practices for mental health, as, as same as physical health, oh. um, in the workplace, and um, get people to talk about it, and make available certain resources to everybody everywhere. And it's going to, overnight, change, I believe, um, the way millions of people look at and treat and mental health. The problem also, by the way, it's one in four, but two out of three of those people do so in the proverbial shadows because they don't know, there is no vocabulary, there is no, yeah. they're uncomfortable, they don't know how to find yeah, somebody. Yeah, so you're to giving the to. people the tools of how to articulate it.